Hey, fanboy nation. This is your pal Daffy Duck, and you're watching. You're watching. We're watching. You're watching fanboy. 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 A fanboy, etc. Fanboy nation. Dot. I assume. Dot. Um. <laughs>
his lines were very good, I thought. Rochelle, you weigh in too, but yeah, I, I didn't feel the need to do much different than what was on the page. He wrote some good stuff. I had a f couple of ads, but not much. For the most part, I just wanted to service him, you know. I mean, not, okay, I got that. <laughs> you know what I mean. Ed is not even a crack in a smile there. Okay. Totally different cult. Yeah, different cult. <laughs> <laughs> the current cult, Nexium, I think that one's the one that's going on right now. Yeah, whew, that was uh, that was rough. At least nobody was branded in this one. Yeah, no one, not not yet. Yeah, branded whatever we don't know, but yeah, not yet. Well, you never know. You know, David could actually turn the documentary into a uh, a real legitimate cult, and then see what happens from there for the sequel. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, five hundred one C three. Uh, C being for cult, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Chaz Bono's in, in the film, and I didn't recognize Chaz till the credits ran, realizing the transformation that Chaz, Chaz has fully gone through. And Chaz's acting levels are beyond what I expected, even though that Sonny and Cher are Chaz's parents. Well, I was shocked. I didn't know he was an actor. I really didn't. I was. Yeah, I very was impressive. impressive. I was very impressed. I've known his mom <laughs> since forever, since 1970. 69, actually. She and Sonny, they were still together at the, con at the time. They came to Don Drysdale's dugout in Van Nuys for New Year's Eve with Deacon Jones. And uh, I was part of the uh, New Year's Eve band that was playing there. So I got to uh, let Deacon Jones sit in on drums and play music and hang with Sonny and Cher as we moved into 1970. So that, that goes back like a, a few time. years. I've seen her many times since. She's a wonderful lady. I, I really like her a lot. Yeah. Well, Rachel, I mean, your your character puts Ed through Ed's character John through the ringer. Um, take take us through how this story develops, and and just the lunacy for Myra in trying to convince John that not only is he kind of the problem, but he should be more open and receptive to get out of his comfort zone. Well, not a lot of acting there, is all I'll say. From either end. Go ahead, I, Rochelle. Tim, art in Tim, it, 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 what is it called? Art imitating life or life imitating art? You know, I'm dyslexic. I can't figure that one out. I think and, you just proved that, honey. I, yeah. Okay, there you are. But having said that, um, yeah, I think it usually is incumbent upon the woman to sort of uh, the emotional um, expansion of a, a relationship. Don't, wouldn't you say, honey? <laughs> so oh, yeah. In this Whatever you case, say, sweetheart. Myra's the one that's that's wanting them to go to this, to sort of open up, to expand their marriage. And, and, um, and I think so in this, in doing so, she sort of falls for um, David, you know, um, uh, whatever his name is. What's the cult leader's name? I mean, Gordon. What is it again? Gordon. Gordon. Yeah, or Gordon is how no, it's Gordon. There so many projects <laughs> since then that I just can't keep them all straight. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, all right, but falls for Gordon. But I, unfortunately, they didn't follow that Myra story. And I think Myra's story, if there's going to be a sequel, is it's her story. Okay, so there you are. Don't you, honey? Yes, thank you. Oh, yeah, they'll build a whole project around you. Yeah, well, why not? It's the age of the older woman. Or slightly older. Okay, older. There are lots Let the record show that the defendant was silent at this point <laughs> in the testimony. Everybody wants to see older women on film. That's just the way it is. Uh, David had t had taken us through that the shoot was really only like twelve days total for the for it the was film. So fast, I mean, literally, if you didn't get it right in one take, you were that's it. Okay, all right, yeah, it was next. Good. Next, good enough. <laughs> it's called good enough. Let's move on. <laughs> well, the yeah. movie's more than good enough. It's quite hysterical, and to find out that it, you know, it had such a limited budget and then a twelve day shoot. And now the reception at the Austin Film Festival ha has been quite well, where we can still watch it for the next few days until the end of the festival. Um, were you a part of the Q&A on the world premiere this past Friday? Or was it um, you know, something that, that you didn't get a chance to take part in? And what has your, your uh, reception been from the fans that were able to see it so far in Austin? I haven't seen it yet myself. I wasn't part of the Q&A on Friday. I was traveling up to uh, Portland for my grandson's birthday, so I missed all that, but I'm looking forward to hearing from people who've seen it, and I hope they like it. We certainly had fun doing it, and David's wonderful, so no, for that alone, I hope he does well. 
Exactly. And, and I've had friends see it and, you know, they, they say it's very funny and very accurate. I mean, it's what, it's sort of what's going on right now. It's certainly in the headlines. So, you know. Uh, since you had those, uh, you know, people attempting to drag you into their spiritual awakenings or their various uh, new age religions, um, and you, you know, you've seen it go out throughout the years, what would your recommendation for someone that's seeking spirituality be? Uh, would you uh, suggest a more traditional route in, say, the Abrahamic religions? Would you suggest Eastern religions? Or to just give this new age thing a try without losing all their finances? I would recommend people would read some Alan Watts, a very enlightened man by the name of Alan Watts. And a good book to start with is This Is It. And what it's about, I can explain very briefly. This is it right now, this second between you and I and Rochelle is all that's really going on. It's not happening later. It wasn't really happening before. We remember it. It did, of course, happen. But all that's happening is right now. Again, here it comes, this one. This is it. And uh, it's a very good book that helps you get there to being in the moment, if you will, in the now, if you will, uh, being present. It's a good way to live. Well, it's a good way to live. It doesn't offer a lot of comfort necessarily. I think that that's why people are drawn to religion or cults or whatever. They want comfort. They want to know that everything's going to be okay. And this being in the moment, you know, if, you know, if you're still alive, I guess there's hope. But there are other places to get more comfort, I think. I mean, the Abrahamic religions are one place. I think that that is a little more dogmatic. And I think there's a tendency, there's a trend to go away from that culturally, you know, um, to be a little more, I'm okay, you're okay, you know, more accepting, less, less rules. Um, but I do, I do believe their spirituality can um, help people, especially in a time like this. We don't know what's going on. One, we have to live in the moment. Yeah, it's completely right. But two, we want to know that there's some bigger plan going on, or like, like at least it's a comforting feeling to think so. so. Right. Well, before I forget, happy birthday to your grandson, Ed. Thank you for that, Arsene. And uh, he's 17. Wow. Okay. So he, he's almost a man at this point. Yeah. Uh, now I'm feeling old. But uh, with, with the film itself, you know, you sit there and these characters and then Ja rules in the movie, which, which threw me for a loop for a second there. I didn't expect to see Ja in the film, um, you know, and then the, the couple of twists that go in there that I can't give in the, in the third act. Uh, you have to sit there. What, like, and, you men and you mentioned that it was a quick shoot and you had to get it one and done. But was there a specific joke that just kept you laughing that you got to, that, or you had to at least take more than one take for because the line was just so funny for you? Ed? You go first, Rochelle. <laughs> Working with Rochelle is always a treat. I'll be quite sincere now. She's always very funny and very present. So she <laughs> has the ability to crack me up. Yeah, I mean, between us, that was, oh, we had, to, we did a little bit of improving. I would do, there's a scene where we're on a very chartreuse pink, it's a pink, hot pink couch. That was our first thing we did, we shot. And so there was a little bit of improving in that, and it was quite funny. So just to sort of get through it, we have to sort of warm up because, you know, we're, we're um, we do this all day long. This is who we are. We talk to each other like we do in the film. This is who we are. This is it, right, honey? I don't think you say, sweetie. <laughs> so long as there aren't too many uh, group hugs going uh, going about, shall we say? That was exactly. Fun. That was the fun part. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it was a great precursor to, to future events in the film, and you know, it, it was a nice little uh, throwback joke, uh, you know, before the credits ran and everything. So obviously, you're having fun together. It, it shows that you're very caring for each other. Uh, it was also smart that you decided to sit in separate rooms from each other at this point. So you know, can feel the love. That's why we're still together after all these years. Separate <laughs> rooms. Is that what it is? Is that, is that the, the key to a happy relationship? relationship? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and then she leaves you alone during the Dodgers World Series games at this point, And you're good he to go. Exactly. He leaves me alone. during. He knows nothing about <laughs> any kind of... I'll watch the Dodgers. This is exciting that they're in the World Series. Honey, it's a baseball team. We actually, you know, the smaller ball, not the big ball, but the small one. Thanks for clearing that up for everyone, honey. <laughs> All right, Rochelle, what's your prediction then? Do Dodgers and six or Dodgers and seven? Why not six? Huh? Let's just go for six. 
All I right. mean, it'd be fun if it was seven and give us something to do since we're just home watching television. <laughs> get, get them to throw the game for better betting odds for game seven and gives us an extra couple of days to enjoy the series. I even forgot there was a series. <laughs> I see it in the newspaper. I see, oh, they're still playing. Oh, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm happy that they're winning today. They're up three to two. So we'll see if it's going to be game, game six that closes it or game seven that's going to put everybody on the edge of their seat. Yeah. Okay. Since we're in LA or at least Southern California and have to mention what's going on locally. Exactly. Yeah. Between the Flyers and the World Series. <laughs> it's not dull. There you go. Um, before I let you go, you know, you, people have access to the Austin Film Festival to be able to see the film, film there. It, later on, it's going to be released on VOD and possibly DVD. Um, you know, we're still in the middle of this thing. Uh, let's say we're headed towards Game 7, so people that aren't watching the World Series or have passed Game 6 in the World Series have something to do while they wait or just want to avoid sports altogether. Why do they need to check out Reboot Camp? Eddie, you want to take it? For my money, it's funny and charming, and uh, David's wonderful in it. Everybody's very good at it. It's a, I haven't seen the film yet, but I remember being on set, and I expect it to be every bit as good as I experienced you know, on the, on, the, on the set. It was very, very nice. Yeah, I think they, it's timely. It's what's going on currently in our culture, you know, and... Uh, there's a lot of funny people in it. It real he really they really assembled a very funny cast, and you know and it's a a a, um, a warning. <laughs> it's a it's a interesting a you know, cautionary know, tale, right, that honey? That is what see we work as a team. I tell you, he knew what I was thinking, and I couldn't say it. I gave him an opportunity to say it, and he did. So well, how kind she is. Well, luckily, satire helps us with, uh, with these things at times, especially humor will, uh, will be our greatest teacher more often than not. Absolutely. Um, if you are on social media, because a lot of people seem to be avoiding it these days, especially for the next couple of weeks with what's going on in the United States, uh, where could we find you if we want to connect? At, at Begley Jr. for Junior, at E-D-B-E-G-L-E-Y-J-R. Just look up Twitter at Begley. It'll you get it if you do that kind of a search. God, I wish I did Twitter. I don't do tw I don't tweet, but I do do Facebook. Believe it or not. Yes, I'm old. What can I say? I just like my friends from high school. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Rochelle Carson Facebook or Rochelle C Begley uh, on Instagram. Perfect. Ed Bailey Jr., Rochelle Carlson, Reboot Camp, still showing right now at the Austin Film Festival. You can get your digital tickets now. Uh, check it out. It's one of the funniest movies I've seen all year. I love these mockumentary styles, and this is definitely on par with anything that Chris Guest has put out. Uh, Ed can attest to those because he's been in most of them. He has indeed. Well, thank, <laughs> thank you for having us on, RC. Very nice. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Please see it. It's funny. <laughs>